This is Infinity, and in today's hour-long episode, I'll show you a compilation of the craziest Guinness World Records that simply can't be broken. Jumps from a gigantic height without a parachute, and a parachute jump from the stratosphere, dives to depths of hundreds of meters with and without scuba gear, the fastest run on hands and downstairs on hands. You'll see the strongest, toughest, craziest, most incredible, weirdest, and most patient record holders whose achievements are truly astonishing. Sit back and enjoy the show. Javelin throw is quite an interesting and spectacular discipline. It was especially spectacular when Uwe Hohn, a German athlete who set a record that's unlikely to be broken, performed in it. On July 20, 1984, Uwe Hohn made history. He threw a javelin with such force that it almost flew off the field. It landed on the opposite side of the stadium, almost hitting people. When the measurements were taken, the results stunned everyone. 104 meters, 80 centimeters. This record not only made history, but completely changed the sport. Initially, the plan was to completely ban javelin throw at stadiums, but eventually they decided to just change the design of the javelin. The javelin's center of gravity was shifted forward, resulting in an earlier lowering of the javelin's nose. This made the discipline safer, but at the same time reduced the throwing range by about 10%. The record for throwing the new javelin was set by Jan Zelensky in 1996. He threw 98 meters and 48 centimeters. Considering that even that record can't be broken for 26 years, what about Uwe's record? To me, it's unreal to break it. The fastest on hands. Some records are astonishing and some are also very motivating. Zion Clark's achievement is just that. This guy is missing the lower half of his body, but that doesn't stop him from moving very fast. Last year, Clark set a Guinness World Record by running 20 meters on his hands in under 5 seconds. It's hard to argue that this is a phenomenal result. I'm sure quite a few people would run the same distance slower than Clark did on his hands. In general, Zion doesn't just run around the stadiums, he's also an excellent wrestler who was even recognized as the best in his state. You bet he was. In spite of the lack of legs, Zion easily defeats even fully healthy athletes. In his spare time, Zion works as a motivational speaker. Clark plans to become the first American to compete in both the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Take a look at this shot. Five guys standing on a giant skateboard. Is this a shot from a Naughty's music video with a lot of computer graphics? Or is it a badly photoshopped picture? Surprisingly, the picture is absolutely real. You can see the world's largest skateboard, which was designed by Joe Siaglia and Rob Dyrdek. About 10 years ago, they created the skateboard, which quickly got into the Guinness Book of Records and remains there to this day. It's hard to surpass the creation of Siaglia and Dyrdek, which is 11.1 meters long, 2.6 meters wide, 1.1 meters high, and weighs 1,632 kilograms. If you're not Gulliver, then you can't perform the ollie or kickflip using the skateboard, but it is possible to ride this monster. Since I'm talking about skateboards, why not talk about limbo skating? It's a discipline in which an athlete has to skate under low barriers while doing the splits. It may not sound very interesting, but look at how it's done by Shristi Sharma. Several months ago, this girl from India set an amazing record, skating under 10 hurdles while doing the splits in 1.69 seconds. This looks epic. You know what looks even more epic? A usual limbo. Wow. 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 Many of you may have played this game as children. How much did you have to bend to get under the barrier? It's unlikely you crawled under a 30 centimeter high barrier, right? It seems unrealistic in general, but look at how Shamika Campbell does it. The height of the barriers is 30 centimeters and the distance is 3 meters. Note that she does not crawl on her knees, Shamika moves exactly on her feet. It's yet another proof that the human body is capable of the most incredible things. Unusual Stair Climbing How can you climb stairs? The usual way? By stepping over one or even several stairs? You can even climb stairs on your hands. 
But what about climbing stairs on your head? It seems like complete nonsense, but that's exactly what the Chinese extreme climber Li Long Long does. He holds the extremely unusual record for jumping up steps on his head. Li stands in a stance, releases his hands, and starts literally jumping on his head up the stairs. He doesn't help himself. He moves exactly on his head, jumping up and down before each ascent. He became the record holder in 2012 by climbing 34 stairs. And in 2015, he broke his own record by climbing 36 stairs. In 2020, Long Long tried to renew the record by climbing 37 steps, but he didn't succeed. It seems that only this Chinese man is able to remain a record holder, at least for now. Basketball The free throw in basketball is a common occurrence. If you've watched basketball games, you've seen that basketball players almost always hit the basket for a free throw, because for a professional athlete, it's no problem to hit the ball in the basket from that distance. Even making a few accurate throws in a row is no problem for basketball players. But what about dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of free throws in a row? I think not even the top players like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, or Steph Curry can do that. But Ted Martin can. In 1975, he hit the basket 739 times. And in 1996, he broke his own record with 5,221 consecutive free throws. That's just unbelievable. Who is this Ted Martin anyway? Maybe a basketball legend that few people know about? Actually, no. What's amazing about this whole story is that Ted hardly has anything to do with basketball. He just has good accuracy and precision. Let's take a look at another amazing basketball record. Over 5,000 free throws is cool, but what about hitting the basket from over 200 meters away? Seems unrealistic, but Derek Heron disagrees. In 1998, he traveled to the Kingdom of Lesotho in South Africa and made the most accurate basketball throw at 201 meters, 42 centimeters, near the Melit Sunyai Falls. Although it took Derek a lot of time and a lot of balls to set this record, it doesn't negate the coolness of the record. Tattoos Some of you probably have tattoos. Some may have one barely visible tattoo on their body, while others, for example, may have their arms completely tattooed. In any case, no matter how many tattoos you have, you can't break the record of Gregory Paul McLaren, also known as Lucky Diamond Rich. This 51-year-old resident of New Zealand is the most tattooed man on the planet. 100% of Lucky's body is covered in tattoos. You won't find a single spot on his body that isn't tattooed. Lucky even has tattoos on his eyelids, between his fingers and in his mouth. The New Zealand resident has so many tattoos and such a strong desire for more that he has to outdo the old tattoos with more color and lighter tattoos and add different colors. Lucky has stretched earlobes and has veneers on his teeth. How long do you think a racer can drift? A few minutes in a row? or maybe a whole hour without stopping. Take it up a notch. In this regard, the crazy record belongs to car instructor Johann Schwartz. A few years ago, he set a world record for non-stop drifting. Driving his BMW M5, Johann drifted for eight hours without stopping. Very difficult to set such a record, not only because the driver has to be constantly focused, but the car also needs to be fueled. But how do you do it while you're driving? It was very easy. The other car, with an extra tank in the trunk, started drifting in parallel with Schwartz's car. The stuntman, sticking out the window of the second car, connected a hose to Schwartz's car and started pumping gasoline. With five refills, Johann Schwartz drove about 375 kilometers drifting. That's 210 kilometers more than the previous record in this discipline. Do you think such a record can be broken at all? How do you imagine priests? For many of you, a priest is a spiritual person. Far cry from sports and demonstrations of strength, right? What about such a priest? It's Kevin Fast, and in his spare time away from church service, he likes to drag weights. The pastor's greatest accomplishment remains towing a giant airplane. In 2009, he was able to move an airplane that weighed 189 tons and pull it 9 meters forward. To this day, no one has been able to break this record. Keep-ups. Can you do keep-ups? How long can you keep the ball up? 
If you've played soccer, you can probably last at least half a minute. But what if you add walking and harsh weather conditions to your keep-ups? Then it becomes very difficult to do keep-ups. Nevertheless, John Farnworth can handle this challenge. In 2019, this soccer freestyler set an incredible record. To do so, he took a ball and equipment with him and went to the Sahara Desert. John walked through the desert without stopping, keeping the ball up. In one hour, he managed to cover 5.86 kilometers doing keep-ups. But John didn't stop there, and over the next seven days, he crossed 100 kilometers of the desert, still doing keep-ups. Neither the heat, nor the sandstorms, nor the uncomfortable terrain could stop him. He's a real record holder. The probability of a person being struck by lightning is very small. It's much less likely that lightning will strike a person more than once. This is a truly unique case. In fact, Roy Sullivan, known as the human lightning rod, went down in history with such a record. From 1942 to 1977, he was struck by lightning seven times, and he managed to stay alive. In 1942, only Roy's fingernail was struck by lightning. In 1969, he lost consciousness after a discharge. In 1970, lightning paralyzed his arm. And in 1972, another discharge set his hair on fire. The fifth, sixth, and seventh discharges caused Roy various injuries, but he survived each time. Because of this, he was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't think anyone would want to break Roy's record, and no one would be able to do it. Next in this episode, I'll show you the most record-breaking jumps in history. You'll find out how high a human can jump from a place and at a run, what athletes are the most leaping in the world, and how unusual jumps from a height of several tens of kilometers look like. As a rule, when it comes to jumping, many people immediately think of the high jump, one of the most famous sports. So let's start with it. Last year, the Olympic Games were held in Tokyo, and athletes participated in the high jump. The champions were Italian Gianmarco Tamberi and Qatari Mutaz Barshim. Both showed a result of 7.7 .7 feet. That's very good, but they still couldn't break the record, which has been for about 20 years. Okay, Tom, it was man. set by the Cuban Javier Sotomayor. At the Olympics in Barcelona in 1992, he took gold with a leap of 7.6 feet and a year later, he set the legendary record in Salamanca. The athlete jumped eight feet in height. He was the first person to break the eight-feet milestone, which previously seemed something unreal. Subsequently, the Cuban tried to surpass his own achievement, but could not. Neither could any other jumper. The 1993 record is still unbeaten, and no one knows when it will be broken. Some jump over the bar, and some like to dive into the water from a height. I'm sure there are plenty of people like that among you, too. At what maximum height have you jumped? Maybe from a 16-feet tower in a swimming pool? Or from some 32-feet cliff in the countryside? If so, you've already got a lot of respect. But none of you have jumped from greater heights than Swiss Lazaro Schaller, nicknamed Lasso. He loves to jump from great heights and set a fantastic record in 2015. He climbed a rock near the Cascada de Salto waterfall and dove into the natural pool from a height of 193 feet. Just imagine how high that is. That's about the height of a 20-story building. At the moment Lasso entered the water, his speed was around 75 miles per hour. The Swiss jumped very good, at attention with his hands pressed down, correctly grouped. But even with this and being a professional, he was not without injury. Lasso hit the water and dislocated his hip, but luckily he survived. Many people would like to break Lasso's record, but are they prepared to risk it? After all, any misstep can lead to tragedy. When jumping into the water from a great height, it's very important to regroup well, because falling on your back or stomach can be very painful. Nevertheless, some people jump into the water just like that, flat on their stomach, and they do it from 36 feet height. Sounds like a fiction, but it's a fact, and the American Darren Taylor is proof of that. He climbs onto a 36-foot tower and jumps on his belly down into the pool, which has only 12 inches of water in it. In 2011, he did this in Trondheim, Norway, jumping from 36.7 feet height before breaking his own record by raising the height to 37.7 feet. No wonder they call him Professor Splash. 
Any normal person would have broken all bones and went to the hospital for a couple of months after such a jump. But Professor Splash every time gets up from the pool unscathed. How is that possible? As Taylor himself says, the main thing is to splash as much water out of the pool as possible during the landing. The American does it by sticking out his stomach and spreading his arms and legs to get as much contact area with the water as possible. That is, his technique is exactly the opposite of the technique of professional divers. Well, Professor Splash sounds convincing, but I wouldn't follow his advice, and I don't recommend it to you. Curtis Rivers I'm sure you've all seen this footage of people bungee jumping from high bridges and rooftops. They can fly several dozen or even hundreds of feet before the rope is fully tensioned. It looks epic, but it's too boring for Curtis Rivers. This guy is a cool thrill seeker who set a phenomenal record. In 2001, he performed a bungee jump from 15,197 feet height. That's right, over 2.7 miles. It's hard to believe that this is even possible, but it's a fact. Of course, Curtis was not jumping from a bridge or a building, but from his hot air balloon. The balloon went up in the air over the Spanish town of Puerto Riano. Curtis secured his gear and jumped down. He was held down by a 32-feet rope, which stretched to 98 feet in flight. So yes, he didn't fly 2.7 miles down on the rope, but even so, his achievement looks epic. Beautiful goals in soccer can be scored not only with the feet, but also with the head. And many of you will agree that in this regard, Cristiano Ronaldo has no equal. The Portuguese literally flies around the pitch. Just look at his amazing goals against Chelsea in the 2008 Champions League final, or against Manchester United in 2013. But in 2019, Ronaldo surpassed himself. Back then, he played for Juventus and, in the game against Sampdoria, scored a goal with his head, jumping 28 inches above the ground. He was thus 8.3 feet high. The Portuguese's knees were at the level of his opponent's heads, so it was no surprise that he scored with ease. For a long time, it was Cristiano who was considered the main jumper in soccer, but not so thus the soccer record for jumping now belongs to him. Although the guy's good, I think everyone would agree that Ronaldo's headed goals are much more elegant, because the Portuguese literally hangs in the air. In this respect, Cristiano is a bit like Michael Jordan. The legendary basketball player had a resounding nickname, his airness. Michael would pick up the ball, dribble it, then do a long jump and put it in the basket like he was flying on wings. It was hard to even call it a typical dunk as it looked like Jordan was just smoothly lowering the ball in, not dunking it from above. Jordan's jumping has become his main thing, and the image of Flying Jordan adorns the logo of the company, Air Jordan. Like Cristiano, Michael held the record for the height of the jump for a long time. By the way, it was something between 43 to 47 inches. But last year, a new jumping leader appeared in basketball. A young Keon Johnson set the NBA DraftKings vertical jump record with a jump of 48 inches, just barely beating Jordan's height. Keon can jump both at a run and from the ground. Either way, he's able to soar very high. He's good, and he broke the record rightfully, but he's yet to show the full extent of his leaping ability in a real NBA game. If you ask me, it's too early to call Keon the new his heir. Okay, jumping basketball players and soccer players are cool, but skydiving is much more epic. Plus, if skydiving is performed from a huge height, you can jump from a height of several hundred feet or a couple of miles. But what about jumping from a height of 24.2 miles? It seems impossible, but Felix Baumgartner doesn't agree with it. In 2012, he got into the stratosphere in a balloon and jumped down. He flew for a very long time, a little over nine minutes, of which four minutes and 19 seconds he spent in freefall reaching a speed of 728 miles per hour. That is, Felix broke the sound barrier. In the middle of the flight, Baumgartner opened the parachute and safely reached the ground, setting several records. It would seem that this is the limit of man's ability, but no. Just a couple years later, Felix's record was broken by Alan Eustace. Alan got to an altitude of 25.7 miles while strapped to a balloon. At the maximum altitude, the balloon sort of shot Alan with a special explosive device, and he went into a freefall. Alan flew to Earth for 15 minutes. He reached an even higher speed, speeding up to 820 miles per hour in flight. Eustace broke the world records of initial altitude and freefall distance. Although he could be considered the more successful skydiver, 
he and Baumgartner jumped with different parachutes and from slightly different conditions, so they can both be considered champions and great record holders. What would be cooler than a parachute jump from a giant height? Only a jump without a parachute from a great height. It sounds like complete nonsense, because falling from a giant height without a parachute is practically certain death. Yes, there are nuances. The record holder in this regard is American stuntman Luke Aikens. In 2016, he stepped out of an airplane at 4.7 miles height and landed two and a half minutes later with no injuries. The thing is that Luke didn't fall on the ground or in water, but on a special net. The size of the net was 98 by 98 feet, and spotlights were placed around it. This is how Aikens oriented himself in flight. The netting seemed not small, but when flying from 4.6 miles, anything could go wrong. Luke could have gotten lost in space, lost consciousness, or just missed a bit. Fortunately, that didn't happen. He was on a clear course and flipped over in the last seconds before landing to fall on his back and reduce the risk of injury. It should be noted that Luke jumped without a parachute or wingsuit at all. That is, if anything, he could not back himself up. There's another discipline in which there's at least some kind of safety net. It's called bonsai skydiving. The essence is that a thrill seeker is in an airplane or in a balloon. They throw down first their parachute and then jump themselves. Their task is to catch up with the parachute in flight, put it on and unfold it before the critical altitude is reached. Look how Finnish skydiver Antti Pendikaden does it. The courageous guy drops his parachute, takes off his shirt, and jumps down from a height of 2.4 miles. After 40 seconds of freefall, Antti grabs hold of his partner and reaches the ground unharmed without a parachute. Even though he was being backed up by other skydivers, everything could have gone wrong any second. In general, the crazy Finn was lucky to perform a 100-point bonsai skydiving. Let's go back from balloons to land. There's another cool high jump record worth talking about. The high jump is a great exercise. It's often practiced by crossfitters and other athletes. The exercise is quite difficult, which makes Christopher Spell's record look even cooler. The guy became famous in 2020 when videos of his jump started going viral in the internet. The guy soars onto tires, which are about five feet high, like a vulture or an eagle. It's unbelievable that he can conquer such heights. But this isn't the limit. In February 2021, he jumped to a height of 5.5 feet, setting a new record. A spell says he's trying to prove there are no limits to what people can do. Well, he's doing it good. And lastly, let's take a look at the beautiful jump from the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Its height is 2,716 feet. Of course, this is not a 25.4-mile jump from the stratosphere or a net jump from 4.3 miles height but it's also very good. In addition, there are no higher buildings in the world yet, so this is the maximum possible height of the jump from a building. French base jumpers Fred Fugin and Vince Reffitt jumped. With their 2014 jump, they set a world record. No one had ever jumped from the highest point of the Dubai skyscraper before then. The Frenchmen jumped simultaneously, and then after circling the building and leaving colorful trails behind them, opened their parachutes and made a soft landing. From record-breaking high jumps, let's move on to unbelievable deep dives. Next, you'll learn how deep a human can dive with and without scuba gear, where the world's deepest pool is, and what underwater flips with swallowed swords look like. You've definitely never seen anything like this before. The Deepest Pool The depth of a standard swimming pool varies from 3.9 to 19.6 feet depending on the purpose of the pool. Even 19.6 feet is already a hefty depth, but it's nothing compared to the record holder because it's 10 times deeper. I'm talking about the pool called Deep Dive Dubai. It opened last summer and was immediately recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the deepest pool in the world. Its depth is just over 196 feet. The pool itself holds about 3.6 million gallons of water. That's about six times more than a standard Olympic swimming pool. Deep Dive Dubai is designed for diving. Both beginners and professionals can dive here. Beginners can dive to a depth of 19.6 and 68.8 feet through the underwater spaces from land, while professionals can try to dive to the very bottom. Here, by the way, is not just a bare tile, but an amazing sunken city, which is mesmerizing. The main thing is not to forget about the oxygen supply in a scuba bag. 
the pool itself is shaped like a giant shell as a tribute to the history of pearl mining in the UAE. In addition to the pool itself, on the territory of the giant complex, there's a restaurant, a dive store, and viewing platforms, which allow visitors to examine in detail the underwater space of the pool. In general, there's something for everyone. The Deep Dive Dubai Pool is great for those who love to scuba dive, but there are daredevils in the world who are willing to dive to great depths without scuba. Diving even 164 to 196 feet without scuba is risky and epic at the same time. But what about diving below 328 feet? In this regard, there is now no equal to William Truebridge. This New Zealand freediver is the holder of many world records, including current ones. In 2016, he did something unbelievable by diving to a depth of 406.8 feet without scuba near the Bahamas. It took Truebridge 4 minutes and 24 seconds to hold his breath to reach the record-breaking depth and rise to the surface. In this way, he broke his own record of 400 feet set only a few days earlier. Truebridge held another world record of diving without scuba. He's previously dived to a depth of 396, 380, and 354 feet, and each time surpassed himself. I wouldn't be surprised if the next record for diving is set by him. It seems that there are almost no limits to what a person can do, but it's unlikely that Truebridge can dive to a depth of 492 or 656 feet without scuba. That would definitely require some scuba gear. But even with scuba, one cannot descend to infinity. The pressure and temperature play a great role after all. So far, Ahmed Gamal Gabar has shown the maximum result. In September 2014, this Egyptian diver set a fantastic world record by diving to a depth of 1,089 feet. He reached the lowest point quickly enough. It took him only 12 minutes, but it took him almost 15 hours to return to the surface. If the Egyptian had resurfaced quickly, he could have been injured or suffered from decompression sickness. A team of doctors constantly monitored the health of the diver. Gabber broke the record, which at that time was held for nine years. The Egyptian himself prepared for a phenomenal dive for four years because the pressure at a depth of 1,148 feet, to which the diver was originally going to dive, reaches 497 pounds per square inch. And while Gabber didn't conquer 1,148 feet, even 1,089 feet is something incredible. Do you think this record will be broken? Swords and Flips Shane Hultgren, also known as the Space Cowboy, loves not scuba diving and flippers, but swords. This thrill seeker has set many records related to swords on land, for example, swallowing 18 swords at a time. Even when Shane goes into the water, he has a sword with him, so he's always ready for another record. In 2014, for example, he set the record for the most swords swallowed underwater. There were as many as four. Even that's amazing, but that's not enough for Shane. In 2017, he dived with a sword, swallowed it underwater, and then did two underwater flips, setting another insane record. On the same day, Shane also did an underwater swim with a swallowed sword, setting another record for the longest distance of an underwater swim with a sword in the mouth. It seems all these records will be impossible to break. Unless, of course, the space cowboy does it himself. Breath holding. How long can you go without breathing underwater? A minute? Two? Or maybe three whole minutes? If so, congratulations, you have trained lungs. But I'm sure none of you can go more than 20 minutes without a single breath. But Budimir Shabbat can. This Croatian diver is a real amphibian. Of course, he can't breathe underwater, but he can go without oxygen for a very long time. And he's repeatedly confirmed this with unrealistic records. For example, in 2018, he held his breath for 24 minutes and 11 seconds. And last spring, he surpassed himself and stayed underwater for 24 minutes and 33 seconds. What's the secret? Could it be that the Croatian is somehow able to get oxygen from the water through his skin? Or are his lungs abnormally huge? Actually, no. Of course, he has trained lungs, but the usual deep breath is not enough in any case. To hold his breath for more than 20 minutes, Shabbat uses a special technique of static apnea. First, he saturates his body with pure oxygen and then takes a deep breath and dives under the water. His task is not to make any movements and keep his pulse as low as possible. 
Because of this, he's able to stay underwater for a very long time. If you're impressed by this and you're already going to the store for a couple bottles of pure oxygen, take your time. Static apnea technique is effective but dangerous even for professionals. It can be fatal for beginners due to hyperventilation of lungs and potential loss of consciousness underwater. On a single breath While some record holders take a breath and dangle motionlessly underwater, others make active movements, like swimming long distances. It's hard to find someone cooler than Dave Mullins. This New Zealand freediver holds several records. In 2010, for example, he managed to swim 715 feet underwater without flippers on a single breath. The same year, he set another record, swimming 800 feet underwater in four minutes using only a monofin. It goes without saying that Dave does not use the same technique as Budimir Shobat. He doesn't oxygenate his body and he doesn't use any tricks at all. The New Zealander relies solely on his trained lungs, and that's cool. So far, all the records I've told you about have involved only one person each. Let's take a look at a couple of epic mass records as well. For example, the unique underwater human chain. In 2016, the diver training agency Raid Italia set the coolest record ever with the help of their trainees. 173 people descended to the bottom of the sea off the island of Elba in Italy and formed a single chain. First, they swam following the rope, then grabbed the rope all together, and then took each other's hands. With this unusual record, the agency wanted to show how beautiful diving is and that it can unite people. Surprisingly, just three years after this incredible achievement, an even more epic record was set on the other side of the world. 578 divers formed the longest underwater chain near the Indonesian city of Manado. It looks about the same as the Italian chain, but there are a lot more people. So visually, this record seems much cooler. Super Swim Marathon swimming is currently considered to be the longest swim. This is the longest distance in Olympic swimming. Athletes swim 6.2 miles in open water, which requires special endurance. If you've ever swum long distances, you know how long 6.2 miles is. But for Walter Penish, 6.2 miles is just a warm-up. In 1978, he did a stunning super swim that demonstrated that a person hardly knows the limits of their capabilities. Walter literally swam from one country to the next. He started from Havana, the capital of Cuba, and swam towards the United States. Walter swam continuously for 34 hours and 15 minutes and eventually reached the small town of Little Duck Key on the U.S. coast. In total, he swam just over 128 miles. That's some alien level. 128 miles is extremely difficult to even just walk in one go let alone swim across an actual ocean. In almost 45 years, no daredevil has ever managed to surpass Walter's achievement, and it's possible that his record will never be broken at all. Some people like to swim across the ocean, some like to swim in a river, and I'm not talking about an ordinary swim in an ordinary river, I'm talking about crossing a whole river, more precisely, several rivers. Martin Strell, just like Walter Penish, proved that man is capable of almost anything. In 2007, the Slovene sportsman literally swam the entire Amazon River. The Slovene swam 3,273 miles in the largest river by discharge volume of water in the world. Unlike Walter, he paused, of course, getting aboard his accompanying boat every evening or going ashore to rest and recuperate for the new start in the morning. But that didn't make his achievement any less epic as Martin swam about 49.7 miles a day. After starting at the source of the river in Peru, he ended his journey at the mouth of the river near the Brazilian city of Belém. And finally, the most unexpected record in this episode, running on water. To run on water for more than 328 feet. How do you like that? Seems impossible, but the Shaolin monks once again proved that they are superhumans. Actually, I'm not talking about a full-fledged running on water. After all, it's still unrealistic. I'm talking about running on planks that were scattered across the water. But even so, the record's incredible. It was set by the monk Shi Lilang. You might think running on these planks would be easy, but it wasn't. Any beginner would fail immediately. Shi Lilang uses a precise combination of running speed and keeping his balance so that he doesn't go under the water. 
This technique is called flying over water and it's part of the skill set of Shaolin Kung Fu masters. How many meters on water could you run? Let me know in the comments. Next in our compilation of crazy records, you'll find out how fast a man can go downstairs on his hands, how many times a man can pull himself up in the air on the landing skids of a helicopter, and how long a person can stay in an ice container. Pyramid of Glasses Surely you've all seen the Pyramid of Glasses, right? Yeah, I mean those champagne glasses that are placed on each other at weddings, corporate parties, and other events. Very difficult to build such a tower even from several dozen glasses, but the employees of a Dubai hotel managed to cope with tens of thousands of crystal glasses at once. This January, they erected the structure out of 54,740 champagne glasses. It took five days and the height of the structure was 8.23 meters. Taking into account that the previous record was slightly more than 50,000 glasses, it will be difficult, if not impossible, to beat the Dubai record. And imagine if on the last day of the erection, someone hit a glass and everything collapsed. There are many strange records in the Guinness Book of World Records, and this is one of them. It was set in February and it sounds like the biggest lemon battery or the highest voltage from a fruit battery. Turns out lemons can literally produce electricity. Scientists from the Royal Society of Chemistry combined 2,923 lemons by first cutting them in half. Then they attached strips of zinc and copper to them and eventually the lemon juice worked as an electrolyte and the zinc and copper became electrodes. The lemon battery generated over 2,300 volts. The previous record was broken by more than 1.5 thousand volts, so it's possible that this lemon battery will not be surpassed at all. I only wonder who ever thought of getting electricity from lemons. We continue to talk about crazy records. The next one was set by Hari Chandra Giri, a resident of Nepal. Apparently he doesn't like to go downstairs the normal way, so he decided to do it on his hands. And he did it well. In just 12.65 seconds, he climbed down 50 stairs on his hands to make a successful descent. Of course, such a skill is hardly useful in everyday life, but it looks cool. Do you think this record will be broken? In order to set or break such a record, you need not only strong arms in general but also very powerful wrists in particular. If Hari Chandra Giri wants to strengthen his wrists to improve his own record, he can ask the Egyptian Mahmoud Mahmoud Ayub for help. He's a specialist in push-ups on the wrists. Mahmoud does push-ups alternately on the palms of his hands and wrists, constantly rotating his hands. You need very strong bones and sinews for this. In just one minute, an Egyptian can do 73 push-ups. Even Jackie Chan's character in the Drunken Master movie would have envied Mahmoud. In the movie, Jackie couldn't stand even a minute of such crazy wrist push-ups. Where there are push-ups, there should also be pull-ups. But simple pull-ups are too boring, so why not practice right on the helicopter? That's probably how Roman Sarhadyan, an Armenian athlete who set a crazy Guinness record thought. Not so long ago, he managed to put on a real show. He hung on a helicopter and did 23 pull-ups at a height of 3 meters. That in itself wasn't easy, but it was also complicated by the rain and the fact that the helicopter was constantly moving, increasing the load. According to the head of the Record Registration Committee, only one person in the world, apart from Roman, can do such a thing, but his limit is 20 reps. What element is more difficult than pull-ups when it comes to the bar? Of course, the muscle-up. Many athletes are able to do several repetitions at once, but none of them can compete with the Belarusian Maxim Trukonovic. Recently, the Belarusian strongman set an incredible record doing 32 muscle-ups without stopping. The athlete was tired at the end and rested on top of the bar for literally one or two seconds, but the rules allowed it. There's also one more record, the maximum number of muscle-ups in an hour. In this case, you can not only rest on the top of the bar itself, but also jump off it. But don't think that this makes the task much easier. Zhao Lin from China will confirm to you how badly the muscles get hurt under such a hellish exercise. The Chinese man did 402 reps in an hour, and it's just amazing. While Zhao is defeating everyone on the bar, his compatriot Zhi Yong Feng leaves no one a chance in table tennis. A few months ago, Yen Feng set the Guinness Book of World Records by hitting a ping pong ball 6,241 times. During this entire time, Zhi hit balls served to him by the robot named Q 
without dropping the ball even once. Now it doesn't seem surprising that China is strong in table tennis. There are real machines among the athletes of this country. Continuing the theme of sports, we have skateboarding next. And with it, we have the most unusual record holder in this episode. Because it's a dog. It's Jumpy, and you could call it the most hardcore dog on the planet. Jumpy is a real extreme dog that not only skateboarding, but does it in a way that Tony Hawk would be jealous. Recently, the dog set an incredible record, covering a distance of 100 meters on a skateboard in 19.65 seconds. Thus, Jumpy broke the record of the previous record holder by three hundredths of a second. The dog steered the skateboard completely by itself and even climbed back on the skateboard when it hit the grass and fell off it. All in all, this dog is unequivocally awesome. The Millennium Falcon is not just a legendary starship from Star Wars, but also a legendary Lego toy because it's currently the largest Lego constructor. It consists of more than seven and a half thousand parts, and its size is so large that you can't put it on a regular shelf in the house. A normal person takes a few days or even weeks to assemble the Millennium Falcon Lego constructor, but the American Joshua LaFrance can do it in less than a day. He recently assembled the Millennium Falcon in 21 hours, 36 minutes, and 29 seconds. Such an achievement will be very difficult to surpass. Do you know how to spin a basketball on your finger? It's quite a difficult task, but if you get the hang of it, you can keep the ball on your finger for several seconds. But for a Canadian named Sandeep Singh Kaila, it's too easy. It seems like he could spin a ball on his finger forever. So to set a record, he made the task harder and spun the ball on a toothbrush he clenched in his teeth. The spin lasted 1 minute and 13 seconds. I'm sure Sandeep could have spun the ball even longer, but the ball lost speed. In general, this Canadian is a true champion at spinning balls. Last year, he learned that there is no official record connected with spinning an American football oval ball on the finger, so he decided to set the record. In the end, Sandeep managed to spin the ball for just over 21 seconds. At this point, it's an indisputable record that will be impossible to break. Do you know what tree pose is? Yeah, that's the element from yoga. It's one of the most basic elements of yoga. But it's also not an easy one, because it's difficult to hold a balance and many people wouldn't be able to hold the position for even half a minute. But not Bikram Khadki from Nepal. He stood in this position for 3 hours and 50 minutes. Judging by the last seconds, he could have stood even longer. It would be very difficult for any potential record holder to compete with such a master of yoga. The Guinness Book is full of records related not only to sports, but also to food. And just recently, one of the craziest records was set. British meat producer Finnebroke Artisan in Northern Ireland broke the world record for the largest vegan burger, which weighed 162.5 kilos. The record burger took almost nine hours to cook. After the record was set, most of the burger was donated to a local charity to feed the homeless. Respect. This record is also about food, but not about cooking. Meet this guy, Mohammed. He's from Yemen, and apparently he has a lot of free time on his hands, because he set a rather strange but at the same time unbelievable record. Mohammed managed to build a tower of four chicken eggs stacked on top of each other. Seems that the laws of physics do not apply to Mohammed, but as the record holder himself says, it's extremely difficult to build such a tower. You need to find the center of gravity of each egg because of its unique shape and texture. By the way, the record holder has no plans to stop at what's been achieved. And in the future, he plans to surpass himself. We should wait for the Tower of Five Eggs. And let's finish with the record that was set at the end of last year. The record holder's name is Valerian Romanovsky, and he has something in common with Captain America, because he too can survive a long stay in the ice. In October 2021, Valerian got into a glass container with ice on the main square in Vilnius, Lithuania. The previous record belonged to Frenchman Romain Vandendorp, who spent 2 hours and 35 minutes under the ice in December 2020. The new record, which was set by the Lithuanian, exceeds the previous record by as much as half an hour. Is there a limit to the endurance of these winter swimmers? Time will show. Plank In early 2020, 62-year-old Marine George Hood stud in the world by holding a plank for 8 hours and 15 minutes continuously. That sounds like an outrageous result to me. But surprisingly, it was beaten quickly. Last year, the triumphant was an Australian, Daniel Scaly, 9 hours, 30 minutes, and 1 second. And that's how long he held a plank, balancing on his elbows. Daniel wasn't even close to a Marine. 
In fact, he set an unbelievable record while suffering from complex regional pain syndrome, which manifests itself in constant pain in his left arm. That makes his achievement even more incredible. I wanted to prove to people that no matter what pain barriers you have, if you put your mind to it and you believe you can do it, you can achieve it, is what the record holder said of his achievement. 12 backflips in one minute is an incredible result, but what about 12 fire-breathing full twist backflips? A few years ago, acrobat Aiden Malarcia set an incredible record in Sydney by doing 12 backflips while blowing fire out of his mouth. When we come to museums, we're struck by the paintings, not only in terms of their beauty but also in terms of scale. A floor to ceiling painting in a museum is commonplace. But in fact, all of these works of art are still very small compared to the journey of humanity. That's the name of the largest painting in the world. The size is astonishing. The total area of this creation reaches almost 1,600 square meters. The artist of the record-breaking painting is Sasha Jeffrey. Last year was very successful for him. He not only got in the Guinness Book of Records but also earned a lot of money. The painting was sold at an auction in Dubai for $62 million. This was double what Sasha had originally hoped for. By the way, the artist had not taken so much time to create a record-breaking painting. It took only seven months for him. It's possible that after a couple of years, Jeffrey will beat his own record and paint an even more gigantic painting. Who says dragons don't exist? Then what's this? Only a real Dovahkiin can handle it. Joking aside, this is another amazing record. The largest walking robot on the planet. This is the brainchild of the Germany company Zollner Electronic AG. Several years ago, they created this robot, which was called Fanny. Four-legged technological wonder weighs 11 tons and its length reaches 15 meters. In the chest of the robot, there's a fiery diesel engine with a capacity of 2 liters and 140 horsepower. Fanny is not in the habit of loitering. The dragon likes to attend the biggest role-playing games in Europe and other events. At these events, many people can feel like knights of myths and legends and try to tame the fire-breathing dragon. And let's finish with an unusual record that you probably didn't even know about. The fastest turtle in the world. That's what it sounds like. That's an odd name for a record, isn't it? But the record holder is really impressive. In 2015, the turtle named Birdie became the fastest of all its relatives. It can accelerate to a kilometer per hour speed and cover a distance of about 5.5 meters in just 19 and a half seconds. It's certainly not the speed of Usain Bolt, but still very good. By the way, the reptile itself is called Usain Bolt in the world of turtles. The previous record for the speed of turtles was set in 1971 in Britain when the turtle named Charlie accelerated to a 0.4 kilometer per hour speed. It turns out that a few decades later, Birdie was more than twice as fast as Charlie. Given that, it's possible that no one will be able to break Birdie's record, at least not in the near future. Let's go back to human records. Next in this episode, we have record-breaking bodybuilders. It's worth saying that bodybuilding is a great sport in which you can literally create the body of your dreams. But some athletes go too far in the pursuit of big muscles and records, turning into a giant bag of muscles taking dangerous substances, and sometimes killing themselves. Stay tuned as I'll show you bodybuilders who went too far. Big Ramy Big Ramy is the nickname of Mamdao Alspiai, a professional bodybuilder from Egypt who's widely known in the world of bodybuilding. And no wonder, he's the reigning champion. Mamdao is the winner of Mr. Olympia 2021 and 2020. It's not difficult to understand why he became a champion, because the Egyptian is simply huge. Having started his professional sports career in 2013, Big Ramy has achieved incredible success. Over the years, he won many competitions. The bigger he became, the more prestigious competitions he won. At the moment, Big Ramy is probably the biggest modern bodybuilder. With a height of 175 centimeters, he weighs about 130 kilos. Kilos, and this is on the stage. In the off-season, Big Ramy is different. He goes up to 140 to 160 kilograms. Big Ramy's hips and biceps are his main trump cards. Their circumference is 90 and 58 centimeters respectively, which makes the pictures of the Egyptians seem fake. But no, Mom Dao is exactly like that. Dennis James German Dennis James was born in 1969. 
He played soccer for a long time as a kid and was convinced he was going to be a German soccer star. He was never one of the best footballers on the planet, but became one of the biggest bodybuilders of all time. Since James joined the gym in 1988, he's only gained momentum. Young talent strengthened and grew very quickly, and in the second half of the 90s, the guy had the first successes, including the victory on the U.S. Championship in 1998. Dennis James trained differently with a focus on the broadest muscle of back, so he always impressed with his phenomenal back. Despite such advantages, the athlete always lacked something to win. He competed in lots of pro events, but won only three of them. He competed ten times at the Mr. Olympia, but never made it to the pinnacle of bodybuilding. But I think it's not that bad because James still became an icon of the sport. Posters of the muscular German still adorn the walls of almost every gym in the world. Raleigh Winkler like Dennis James, Dutchman Raleigh Winkler began to comprehend the world of bodybuilding not at once. At first, he played a lot of soccer, but also enjoyed acrobatics and gymnastics. By the way, it came in handy later. The giant often surprised the spectators with somersaults on stage. In 2003, Raleigh switched to bodybuilding, where his journey began, which is not over yet. The Dutchman's already 44 years old, but he still performs actively. Last year, he placed 11th in Mr. Olympia, and also several times he entered the top 10 at various European tournaments. Raleigh is truly huge. He's 170 centimeters tall and weighs between 115 and 130 kilograms. His bicep circumference is even bigger than that of the champion Big Rami, and the Dutchman's chest circumference is 130 centimeters. He is a mountain of muscle, and that's because Sybil Peters, his coach, nicknamed Grandma, she also has another nickname, Coach from Hell. Despite her cute appearance, Sybil exhausts her sportsmen, turning them into titans. You can see the results of such training sessions yourself. Jean-Pierre Fuchs A bodybuilder from Switzerland, Jean-Pierre Fuchs, started training at the age of 16. He discovered that his muscles were developed at an unprecedented rate and that he was gaining weight at an unbelievable rate. At the age of 17, he already weighed 100 kilograms. His parents barely had time to buy him new clothes because he grew out of the old ones in a month. Jean-Pierre's shape was improving by leaps and bounds. In 1993, the giant Jean took part in the World Amateur Bodybuilding Championship where he placed fourth and the next year he became the champion in the same championship. After that, his career began to take off rapidly. He received offers from various companies. The powerful Swiss adorned the covers of many glossy magazines and sports nutrition boxes. Jean could have become even bigger and more successful, but one incident ruined everything. During one workout, Jean fell while squatting with a heavy barbell and broke his leg. Although he went through a recovery process, he didn't reach his prime. What happened to Jean's not uncommon. In the pursuit of records and the creation of a huge body, athletes often suffer, but it could be worse. Some of them take it so far that they even die. Stay tuned to learn about a couple of bodybuilders who fell victims to their sport, as well as to see some of Brazil's most inflated bodybuilders who take great risks with their lives. Chad Brothers as a rule, when we talk about bodybuilders who took it too far, we talk about guys who are overworked and physically unrealistically powerful. Chad Brothers was powerful too, but his love of bodybuilding took its toll on his mental state. The guy was on steroids and synthetics, and one day it played against him. Imagine you're working out in the gym, calmly warming up, running on the treadmill, when suddenly a man comes up to you, punches you in the face, and starts screaming and breaking and smashing equipment. That's exactly the kind of performance Chad put on in 2011 took place in New York City, and security cameras caught the whole thing. According to eyewitnesses, brothers fell off the treadmill and instantly went berserk, increasing the speed of the treadmill, on which another man was running at the time, then hitting him in the face. He then began breaking other fitness equipment. When police arrived, they weren't immediately able to calm the guy down. They had to disarm him with a stun gun. The shot turned out to be fatal. They tried to save the bodybuilder, but in vain. It was determined that Chad had taken steroids with a dangerous synthetic substance shortly before his death. It's believed that brothers fell victim to what's known as roid rage, a state of extreme rage caused by the effects of steroids. Mohamed Benaziza in his youth, Frenchman Mohamed Benaziza was fond of soccer, but then he decided to change the soccer pitch to the gym. This bore fruit. Mohamed began to train, pump up, and win in various tournaments. He, being the underdog, won the Night of the Champions event in 1990, and this victory gave him a resounding nickname, the Killer of Giants. In 1992, Mohamed placed fifth in Mr. Olympia and also won the Grand Prix Holland. A few hours after his victory, he was found breathless in his hotel room. As it turned out, trying to win and show the maximum of his muscles, the Frenchman overdosed on diuretics. In other words, he had completely dehydrated himself. 
Also, the Frenchman probably used anabolics, which affected the health of his heart muscle. Such a mixture of dangerous substances couldn't lead to any other result, and already at the age of 33, Mohammed became a victim of his favorite sport. Arlindo D'Souza While some bodybuilders pump up to the point of exhaustion, follow an incredibly strict regimen and take steroids, anabolics, and diuretics, others go the easier way. Arlindo D'Souza went exactly this way and built an incredibly huge muscles. He did it the dangerous way, injecting a huge amount of mixture of alcohol and fat under his skin. The Brazilian clearly took it too far. His biceps are unnatural and unbelievably huge. Their circumference reach almost 74 centimeters, which is about 15 centimeters larger than the bicep circumference of the current Mr. Olympia champion. It's rather funny that despite such huge arms, Arlindo's body doesn't look like an athletic one. The pecs aren't worked out and there's no six-pack. The Brazilian has to limit himself to light and medium weights since he can't lift heavy weights because his arms are artificially inflated and don't give him much strength. D'Souza's attitude to his health is surprising. He knows that the mixture in his muscles is life-threatening, but he takes it for granted. However, he admits that he took such risks deliberately. Another Brazilian has a similar story. Romario dos Santos Alves wanted to become like the Incredible Hulk, but he didn't want to train too much to build his muscles. Synthol turned out to be an option for him. For three years, Romario injected himself with the drug, transforming his arms and trapezius into something eerie and visually powerful. After a long course, the Brazilian's biceps reached 65 centimeters in circumference. It would seem that the goal is accomplished. Now the guy looks like a muscular superhero, but you have to pay for everything, and especially for the love of Synthol. Over time, Romario's arms began to go numb, and the Brazilian himself began to experience constant pain. Romario took it so far that doctors threatened him with the amputation of both hands if he didn't stop. Fortunately, the story had a good ending. Surgeons pumped all the synthol out of the Brazilian's muscles and saved him. As Romario says, synthol is terribly addictive. According to him, if you inject once and see the result, there will be a second time. And if you inject again, you won't stop. In general, it's definitely better to stay away from synthol. From the bodybuilders, let's move on to the heaviest sumo wrestlers. In the final part of this episode, I'll tell you how many hundreds of kilos the current record holder weighs. And you'll also find out how sumo wrestlers gain such an impressive mass. Dewan Ojo Shuta Dewan Ojo Shuta is the name of the heaviest sumo wrestler in the world at the moment. Not much is known about the athlete, but the most important thing is his weight. Dewan Ojo weighs 258 kilograms which makes him the fourth-ever sumo wrestler in terms of weight and the current record holder of 2022. That's very cool, because the athlete himself is still very young by sumo standards. Last December, the guy was only 28 years old, although generally heavyweight sumo wrestlers reach their peak weight at 30 to 35 years old or even later. Dewan Ojo is not a bad sumo wrestler, plus he's very active. His last fight was a couple of months ago. Dewan Ojo has yet to reach the top ranking, so he's got everything ahead of him. Aurora Satoshi is done with the sport. He finished his professional career in 2018. He wrestled well, but he's remembered not for that, but for his shocking weight, almost 293 kilograms, making him the heaviest sumo wrestler in the history of the sport. Even more interesting, Aurora is not Japanese, but Russian. Under the Japanese name Aurora Satoshi performed a guy from Buriacha, Anatoly Mihahana, who became famous not only in Japan but also in his country. He became the heaviest sumo wrestler in 2017 and confirmed the title in 2018, after which he retired. Even the native Japanese Yamamotoyama Ryuta could not break Aurora Satoshi's record, but he does have a title of his own, the heaviest sumo wrestler of Japanese origin. At his peak, he weighed 277 kilograms and thus was and still is among the top three heaviest sumo wrestlers in history. He's also believed to be the heaviest ethnic Japanese in history. In 2011, Yamamoto Yama finished his fighting career. However, he didn't do it by choice. The record holder was caught in fixed fights. But it seems that Ryuta is not too worried. He still loves sumo and occasionally competes in exhibition fights. A couple of years ago, he even wrestled with former UFC fighter Anthony Rumble Johnson. By the way, you ever wondered how sumo wrestlers become so huge? How do they gain weight of 120, 130, and even 250 kilograms or more? It's all about routine. One of the main rules is no breakfast. Waking up with the first rays of the sun, sumo wrestlers have a wash and train on an empty stomach. Grueling workout can last up to six hours. 
so it's not surprising that no athlete complains of lack of appetite after such physical exertion. The staple dish in the diet of every sumo wrestler is chankanabe soup. It consists of minced meat, seafood, noodles, mushrooms, vegetables, and much more. In addition to this soup, sumo wrestlers also eat steamed rice in large quantities. In general, steamed dishes make up the majority of these athletes' diet. The diet also includes different types of meat, fish, porridges, and greens. Also, many sumo wrestlers consume alcohol, which is known for its caloric content. However, some athletes lead a healthy lifestyle and don't drink. After the first meal, sumo wrestlers go to bed and then go back to training, after which they eat again. That is, they eat twice a day, but in large portions. In a day, a sumo wrestler can consume up to 20,000 calories. Combined with hard workouts, such a routine turns them into real rocks that can hardly be moved. Which record from this episode could you break? Let me know in the comments. And if it was interesting for you, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.